Thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play Team. This actual play uses the 7th edition Call of Cthulhu tabletop role-playing game rules by Chaos. This actual play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. While we try very hard to stick to language for all ages, listeners should know that this podcast may include mature themes. All content, including names, places, events, companies, and etc., that may bear resemblance to entities living or dead, is strictly coincidental. My name is Michael Diamond, and for tonight's game, I will be your keeper. Thank you for joining us again in another episode of the Old Ways Podcast. I'm your keeper, Keeper Michael, and we return to Masks of Nyarlathotep in the England chapter. And we are about to see the fruits of their auspicious labor. But first, let's go through introductions. So to my right. I'm Lonnie. I'm playing Lawrence Edward Oliver Forsyth. And uh, hiking is fun in the English countryside. Yes, you're probably um, hip deep in mud or were at one point. To Mr. Forsyth, right. This is Morgan. I play Lillian Lane, and I have learned a little hand-to-hand combat, courtesy of uh, Jack Doyle. Yes, yes. The uh, soon-to-be-introduced Jack Doyle has uh, effectively trained you at least a little bit in maybe how to use your uh, speed to your advantage. So speaking of, at the end of the table... This is Jake. I'll be playing Jack Doyle, and uh, I taught Lillian how to uh, fight with hand-to-hand combat. Wasn't that nice how that worked out? It's nice. It's very helpful for everybody. To Mr. Doyle's right. This is James. I'll be playing Dr. Sigmund Tattenbach. And um, he is just glad that there hasn't been a fire in a number of hours. <laughs> yeah, you know, speaking of fire, uh, Doctor, didn't you start the last one at the hotel with the flare gun? Well, allegedly. Allegedly. That's right. Allegedly. Allegedly. I apologize. But to the doctor's right. This is Tiffany. I play Maeve O'Shea, and um, I discovered some things. You did. You did. You did. You discovered some things about your compatriots and maybe their opinions on certain things. It's always nice to to get people's opinions, I guess. Oh, actually, maybe it isn't nice to get them, come to think of it, but we'll sort all that out. Nobody wants unwanted advice. <laughs> Ah, yes. And last, but most certainly not least. This is Alex. I'll always be playing Simone Granger. And um, all opinions aside, there is a cult that uh, is begging to be managed. Hmm. You know, I get the feeling that uh, Simone may think that the, it's easier to deal with the devil he knows than the one he doesn't. We'll find out. I'm sure. We open the episode tonight as uh, one Lawrence Forsyth trudges his way out of the naze and back into so we'll say the civilization proper that being the coastal town of Walton on the naze so Mr. Forsyth the the wind the sea air finally greets you and you cast off a bit of the bog smell that you'd uh, gotten so accustomed to in your travels with uh, Simone over the past few hours, you are unbelievably tired. The, the The physical burden alone has been, even for someone with your fit and constitution, has been a trying affair. Yeah, this is not... I really should have taken the boat back, but I couldn't. So, yeah. Indeed. And there is the Coastal Hotel. I will not head to the front entrance or I would hate to go to the front entrance let's put it that way okay I would rather I would much rather slip in a side entrance where uh, you know I'm not tracking mud across the the nice carpet mm, okay yes you uh, you do find a service entrance you, th- you think that's a service entrance You're peeking inside you see that there are some staff members there who are uh Looks like they're just finishing up cleaning the kitchen. I'll knock. There's a, a, a young man comes to the, the door. Uh, can I help you, sir? Yeah, I'm a guest of the uh, establishment, but uh, hmm. I'm afraid that my clothes have gotten a little soiled, and I oh. really don't want to track across everything. So. Oh, so it's quite Is quite there right. a mud closet? Or? Yes, yes, yes. R- right this way. He opens the, the door and directs you to uh, an interior room there where you can 
and take off your boots and it's a it's a mud room for lack of a better uh, term scrape the worst of the damage off and trundle my way upstairs <laughs> okay yeah it uh, evening has set here pretty well uh, the meal that would have likely happened today is as far as over you can hear some of your compatriots in the uh, adjoining rooms here at the marine hotel that you've uh, you've booked but uh, you get in and uh, likely look for perhaps something to properly dress yourself with well, if I'll be going back out, I actually might want to keep these clothes handy. <laughs> no True sense enough. in wrecking two two sets of clothes. Okay, so uh, what's the plan then? First, I go upstairs and see who I see first in, in the rooms. Hmm. That is an excellent Does question. Everybody has their their own room, if I remember they correctly. They do. The first door you see open is the doctor's can uh, hear him he seems to be musing to himself as he's begun to be uh, frequently doing now you can see just just beyond the uh, crack of the the door there he's getting a little fresh sea air and uh, he seems to be doing some writing doctor oh guten tag how are you doing lawrence i'm very tired seems to be going around doctor um we uh, need to get the group together, I think, tonight. All right. He stands up. Well, I suppose I will help you gather everyone together. Um, we will meet in the common room. Is this important? I mean, yes. time-related? Yes. All right, well, then and I bring shall... a change of clothes. Oh, uh, very well. <laughs> Doctor packs up his journal and heads further down the hallway to go see you if Maeve is awake about and alert I'll go knock on Jack's that's a good question Miss O'Shea uh, what book are you rifling through today probably looking more into the scepters so okay so you're actually doing work on them yeah okay why don't you give me a power roll okie dokie pa pow 68 out of 65 actually since I I don't spend luck, I will spend some luck. Three luck, to be exact. Okay. You have been tooling over these for the past several hours, and you get the feeling, one with the crook and one with the inverted onk, that these aren't just ceremonial items. There's something to them. There's a way to attune yourself to them that could be quite advantageous for someone like you. It isn't really until the moment the doctor's knuckles tap on the door that you realize that with just a little more time and perhaps a little more work, you might be able to amplify your own innate ability, a fresh reservoir for your workings. I will uh, write a note down and put them down and go answer the door. Hello. Guten Morgen. How are you feeling today, sweetheart? Hmm? Um, okay. Well, good. Because Lawrence has something for all of us to do to gather together, and it sounds fairly important. He also said, bring an extra change of clothes. O okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. But it sounds fairly dire, he made it sound, so... I'm going to go grab a change of clothes if you want to let Lillian know if she's about. Sure. Danke. I guess I'll, like, pull out some, uh, pants and change my clothes. I almost never wear pants, but, you know, it's good to pants, have. Pants, huh? I know. Give me a spot hidden roll as you go through some of this stuff. Just getting into your trunks and whatnot. Your trunk. Spot hidden. 28 out of 72. That silk robe, the... One that Jack and Lillian pulled out of the apartment complex. Mm -hmm. When you go through your clothes, you come upon it, and you realize that the inside of that robe has two almost identical pockets that have been sewed into the lining of it. They're very long. They're very thin. So it would hold them perfectly. Likely. And you start to put a few things together. Like, 
whoever this woman was, whoever she really was above this spice shop, she was far more than just an associate of Edward Gavigan. She has a role to play, likely, yet. Okay. Well, I need to spend more time with them. I'll go knock on Lillian's door. Lillian, you are still uh, somewhat recovering from your um, pugilist practice with Mr. Doyle, but be that as it may, you have found time to have a nice bath and to uh, use the warm water to recuperate a little bit. Okay. I'm assuming I'm out of the bath and in a robe. Or, or something. Or robe, something. Clothes. It's, it's evening time, probably. In, like, how late is it again? Uh, it's probably at this point uh, now about 8 p.m. by the time Lawrence gets back. Yeah, I'm probably in night clothes and a robe. And sore. So very sore. Just a minute. I get up off the bed and stretch a little bit. And I walk over to the door and, and open it. Hey, Maeve. Apparently, Lawrence has something to tell us that's important and we're to bring in a, a change of clothes. I don't know if all of us are going. I yeah. have something that I need to look at, but... I look down at what I'm wearing and... Okay, where where did he want us to meet him at? At his room or... I, I, get, I guess. I, okay. I don't think I was told. Maybe I was told, but I wasn't really paying attention. Sorry. <laughs> I'll wander until I find him. All right. I Did you want to go tell Jack or do you want me to tell Jack? I don't know if anybody's telling Jack. I was just told to tell you. Oh, okay. I, I, I can go tell him. I will go see what he wants. Do I, do I notice that Maeve is a little distracted? Yeah, but that's not all you notice, actually. So what else do I notice? The hallway smells like it smells like somebody tracked through a, a cow pasture or something. Oh, I wrinkle my nose a little bit. Oh, we really should have somebody clean up here. I, I think that's what the change of clothes is for. Mm. Well, that sounds really enticing. Thanks for letting me know. I will. Uh, I'll let Jack know. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just a little distracted. Yeah, I, I kind of watch Maeve. I'm assuming she's starting to go back down to her room. No, I'm going to go find them. Oh, you're going to go find them? Oh, that's right. I kind of watch her, <laughs> like, wander away and shake my head a little. I, one question then. Uh, Maeve, did you change into pants before you getting Lillian? Yes. The thing that catches your eye, I guess, as Maeve leaves is Maeve's wearing pants. Yeah, that's, that's a little unusual. It's not a usual for I, I wear pants more probably more than she does. It's actually quite striking. I, I never wear pants. Your rear end is quite striking, Maeve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a modern woman. I can say modern pants woman. really do think for her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're in all the right places. I, I head back into my room and uh, I, I change mm. into pants as well. It's a pants party. It's a pants party. Mm. Um, and I grab some extra clothes and put them in my satchel and my my hatchet because okay, <laughs> I'm not sure hatchet. what's going on. Gotta have, gotta have the hatchet. Gotta ha gotta have the hatchet. I then go over to Jack's room and knock on the door. Don't come in. I wasn't planning on it. Oh, sorry. Are, I, uh, are you like naked? I mean, we don't have time for that. I, I'm developing a couple photographs. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. I just want you to ruin the. <laughs> Ruin the prince. We don't have time for those kind of photographs, Jack. We got shit to do. <laughs> Sorry. Says <All> you. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't plan on coming in. Uh, well, I wasn't planning on coming in until you opened the door. Um, yeah, uh, apparently, um, Forsyth is back from somewhere that smells like cow poo. And um, he wants us to meet up with him. Um, there's things going on in the... Nope. Yeah. H how long are you going to be? Uh, just a little bit longer and I'll be down. Or where are we, where are we meeting? I, I don't know. I honestly, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm guessing <laughs> over a four size room. Oh, bring an extra pair of clothes as well. An extra? Okay. I follow where Maeve went. 
Lawrence, your uh, room suddenly, or maybe not so suddenly, but it, it slowly fills with investigators. I, I uh, take the moment while everybody's getting together and talking to grab my things. I know I look terrible, but uh, really not much to do about it. I'm also going to take and grab out a bag, and uh, in the bag will go a shotgun and a crowbar. Okay. So the group eventually assembles in Lawrence's room, and it seems to he's put some things together. So... We found the Miser house, yeah. Okay. Uh, Simon is there now. We agreed it might be good for us to go there now um, before they get there. See if we can disrupt any of their plans without having to uh, um, do unfortunate things we might not like. How long is it till... How many days do we have till the new moon? At this point, probably... It was two weeks or so when you came out here. So it's been about at this point, given the training, probably about four days. You guys probably have a good 10 days until the actual new moon. Isn't it a little uh, premature for us to be uh, going out there? Yeah, we still have 10 days. Gavigan knows that his ambush of us failed. Yeah. So we're supposed to camp there for 10 days? No. If there's anything there that's important to them, I would like to have evidence in case we decide to call the police or failing that, if we can get inside the location, we can figure out the best way to end this once and for all. Okay, you're also assuming that the police aren't in on it. Because, you know, we haven't seen that before. I just want to put that out there. Well, I mean, even more importantly than that, I don't want to tip our hand that we're even here scoping out the house. Right. I mean, we could just burn it down, like, truthfully. But, yeah, but that they, they would just find somewhere else to do their, their right. stuff at. I mean, right now we have an advantage if they don't know we're here that we could catch them unawares. They may not know we even know about the house. I don't know. I mean, it's easy for them to suspect that the mysterious burning down of the spice shop was us. Well, yeah, I, 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 I don't doubt that. I don't assume Gavigan's a, 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 an unintelligent man, and I assume he assumes we know everything. Right, but as it stands right now, we know where they're going to be in 10 days. They're going to be here. They don't know where we're at. They can assume we're out here, but they don't know. You're assuming that none of the locals here are also in on it. Well, I mean, that's a possibility. But if we go out to this house right now and we uh, go in there and they have caretakers and one of them gets away, then they'll absolutely know where we're at. Well, we don't even know if there's a caretaker there, frankly. Yes, but there if there is, and that caretaker just takes that night off and has no idea what's going on, I don't think that, you know, they should have to pay. That's also an issue. I mean, I have no problem with uh, uh, staking the place out and trying to find out as much as we can about it in the meantime, but going in there, I don't know, might be uh, premature. I also think that some of us are not equipped for stakeout or sneaking around. As in, I have no idea how to do any of that. I was not trained on sneaking in thief school. Very well. Um, <laughs> if anybody wants to go with me, I'm going back out there to uh, see Simone. Yeah, I, I have no problem going out there with you guys and taking and helping out with the uh, staking it out. I just don't think going in there is a very good idea. Unless we can make sure that uh, we can do it extremely subtly. I'm a subtle man, Jack. Yes, you are. <laughs> he picks up his bag with the crowbar and the shotgun. <laughs> subtle. <laughs> Speaking of the uh, the nays, as a verb, Mr. House, Simone, even with Lawrence's footsteps still distant, uh, as far as your memory goes, this bog that the house is situated on is quite something. My intent was because when 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 Forsyth left, it was still light out. Oh yeah. Um, so I was going to try to find um, 
someplace drier to kind of hunker down, considering I'm not going to be able to do anything until after it's dark anyway. And I was going to try to find a place to like either put my tarp down or to set up like a like a, a small lean tent or something. Sure. You know, to, to get myself out from the muck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so the nice part about that for you is that there are a couple of areas relatively nearby you could do that at. So you're still um, down the stream or river, so to speak, uh, from the house and the pier. Um, so there are some, what I would say would be kind of scrub grass, swampy flatland mm-hmm. that is available to you uh, about 200 yards behind you, where you could still surveil the dock and the associated wall that's next to it. So and I've had some time to kind of eyeball that. You said there was a boat that was uh, anchored there. Or tied off at the dock. There's a boat, a rowboat, yeah. A rowboat. Does it look like it's seen use recently? Um, hard to tell at this distance. You're still several hundred yards away. Even with okay. your, even with the spyglass or even with the the field glasses, you can really only get so much definition on it. You don't think it's been used recently, though. That's fine. And this this water runs pretty steadily, right? Like it's not stagnant. The, the river or whatever. Yeah, the river's not stagnant. It, it does run. Mm. Yeah, I'll just try to find some place to relax and kind of get my bearings. Um, I'll spend some time, I guess, just kind of listening to the to listening to the environment and letting it kind of lull me to to nap. I don't want to sleep through the night, obviously. So no, but truth be told, it is less than comforting. Mm-hmm. Um, there are no peaceful songbirds here. There are no, um, you know, loons that come in and rest on the waters. You don't hear, you know, the, the playful splashing of, of anything that you would akin to something as a pleasant nature sound. All of the nature sounds here, there's a bit of foreboding to each one. There are frog noises and large toads. Um, there are... Just movement in the grasses here. Hard to tell whether that's the wind or whether it's an animal. Um, the, there isn't enough associated wildlife to support large animals, so you're not necessarily concerned about um, threats, per se. But the sandbars and the, the, the swamp and moor area here is unforgiving as far as... Uh, finding a comfortable spot. I'll settle for somewhat. Dry you can get. The dry part with your gear is not unable for you to get, but you're going to have to stay mostly wrapped up because the rain is intermittent. It comes and goes. It's rained a couple of times already since you've been out here. Yeah. Um, Now my stuff, as far as like my gear is concerned, because we're wearing at this point the kind of the secondary stuff that we picked up mm-hmm. um, on our second day out here. So, like, my stuff is pretty well packed away. Um, I, I guess I'll distract myself from the burping lizards and the, I don't know, ominous crunching of things in schlop by just kind of, like, reviewing my inventory and wondering at this point what... Um, what foresight is going to tell these people to, to like, I'm not too concerned with them coming out here um, as much as I'm concerned about what happens if they do. So I'm just thinking through like, I don't know, because I haven't seen the house. I haven't really approached the wall. Um, I'm trying not to be, you know, I'm, I know I'm anxious. Like I feel anxious and I don't like that. I'm anxious and wet. So probably at some point I just, I don't know, I'll probably get frustrated and tie myself off and go, I don't know, you know, knees up, head in my own lap, kind of curled up and napping. Yes, it it gets to you probably a couple of hours past that. The, The sound from somewhere behind you. It's not close per se, but there's a, a deep and throaty croak. 
and it's much deeper than the rest ones. Much, much more of a, a bass tone reverberates inside your ear canal for a second. And uh, as the, the last vestiges of light leave the horizon, uh, another one, another deep call joins this. Are they close? It's hard to say. They're closer than you thought they were. That's for sure. So this is kind of like waking me up then? Yeah, it, it brings you, it, it, it wakes you out of your um, nap time. It's, it's dark. Mm-hmm. I just kind of open my eyes slowly and I try to remain mindful of where I was. Like, do I think that I've made a ruckus? No, you don't think you've moved at all. You uh, you think, for the most part, you've been silent still the whole time. And then it, the noise comes again, and it comes at the far side of the waterway. Across from you, not necessarily back towards the city, but back towards the sea. And there's a, a splash sound. Sounds like a person jumping in the water. Okay, so I will continue listening and I will just kind of slowly and methodically untie my my wrappings, basically, my the bundle that I was in. Okay. I'm just kind of... Because I heard a few of them and that is disturbing. I, I think about like a, a, maybe an alligator could make a splash that loud. You're not certain that alligators are present in I haven't haven't seen any (laughs) I haven't seen any it's been I would say that it's been some years since you've seen alligators sure I uh, it's a strange place just remember there's a strange place there are strange things the croaks continue I'll leave you there for a second so back at Walton on the Nays Jack are you going with Forsyth out to this place that they've located yeah I'll pack uh some stuff, you know, field glass and all that. Uh, I want to let the doctor and Maeve know that there are some photographs hanging up in my room, drying, and when they're dry, they should look at them. They're from the uh, basement of the uh, spice merchant. How long should they take to dry? Yeah, probably just a couple hours. Just do it in the morning, probably, if okay. I'm not back. Well, hopefully you're back. Well, we'll see. Yeah, then I'll go with Forsyth. Okay. Uh, The two of you head out. Um, He takes you down a few paths that lead out of town, and then soon after that, cut off the path, and you're into the moors themselves. And it is very, very easy in the dark uh, to turn an ankle. Uh, You learn that very quickly when uh, you step into one of these patches that you think is solid and it's not. And you recover fairly quickly, Jack, but it's a, it's a heads up to you uh, to keep the flashlight a little lower, just to make sure that you mm-hmm. can see where you're going. I'm never going to forgive you guys for this. That's what I tell Forsyth. Mr. Forsyth, give me a navigate roll, because you now have to lead him back to where... Yay, it's going to be fun. Uh... Navigate. Where Simone is, navigate, sir. Yes, sir. I can't get lost out here. There's there's just no way. I'm going to have to... What are you going to do? That's a, that's an 80 over 23 as it says. Yeah, it is an 80 over 23. So I'm going to... It's a dumb idea, but I'm going to push it. Yeah. Because, uh, well, I don't have daylight, but I do have the stars. That's true. And I, with the working knowledge, you can follow the stars, and the stars are your friend. And, uh, yes, the stars. Okay, so go ahead and push the roll. Christ, I'm going to die out here. 69 over 23, Jesus. Okay, that's a failed push roll. Yep. So you two walk for a good half an hour, 45 minutes or so. And you walk and walk, and you're going up and down these... They, the moors themselves are not very hilly in this area. There's a there's a few hills, but it's nothing that's so dramatic that it's 
you it's un, you're unable to get over it is dark out that's for certain um and at one point your you think you have your bearing finally by this you know star pattern here in the sky and as you continue to walk that way you fall and trip and kind of go ass over tea kettle into one of these moors i'm going to deal you 3 points of damage um as your face lands on a rock and you roll off the side into the water. Uh, I'm, I'm going to help him uh, out. Uh, he's bleeding all over the place now. It's a, it's a head wound. So I will try to uh, patch him up as best I can. Okay. Uh, so you get him back upright, and you can see that there's a, a gash mark on his forehead. Hey. Hey, look at that. I succeeded. Okay, so you stop the bleeding. And uh, Lawrence, you can recover a hip, a, hit, a single hit point. Okay. Uh, you now have no idea where you're at. His bag is off one side. You can see his torch is kind of half sitting in the grasses. All right, I'll help him pick everything up. And maybe just a couple. We're gonna of die out here, aren't we? No, we're not going you're to. Die. You brought me out here to die. No, we're not going to die, Jack. Just. Uh... Give me a moment. And I sit down on the grass. Muddy grass. <laughs> yep. In fact, the last time that you were sitting down wet, muddy grass with a, a wound was a long time ago. Yeah. It was warmer down there. A little bit. A little bit. Wasn't buried under half a mountain either. <laughs> well, not a mountain, but, you know, the cut. I kind of waver back to my feet, pick up my bag, and keep trying to go north because I know it's north. I remember it is north. north. You're certain of it. And if even if I don't find the exact location, I can find the river. And if I can find the river, then I can follow the river to to where I left Simone. Okay, go ahead. Nope, eighty-nine over twenty-three. You pick a path and you continue going in that direction about Jack about an hour or so later after this you've been out here about two hours now you two reach the coast uh, are, are we supposed to be going to the coast the, and I look out and it's not I mean we followed the coast up okay yeah we followed the coast up oh god my head hurts I'm sorry Jack wasn't my finest hour. Haven't had many of those, to be honest. Yeah, we all have off days. Well, you do know that if if you keep going north from here in this coastline, you should reach the tributary river that leads back. Yeah, and it's not far off the tributary. So, right. Yeah. So you, you got to be close, right? Yeah, got to be. As long as I can find the North Star. Okay, there it is. So the two of you continue on for another hour or so. At this point, you find the, the tip of this river that heads back inland. And you begin curling back and, and heading back through. It begins to bend and curve just as you'd seen before, uh, Mr. Forsyth. And then suddenly, probably a good... 20 minutes past that you begin to see very familiar surroundings yeah you know that the river is going to curve right again and then you're going to see the pier and uh you don't see the pier because it's pitch dark but right i will point in the direction of the other bank of the river and say there's a pier and a wall over there where the manor is it's a large estate I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Simone, there is somebody else out here. You can hear the voices. They're faint, but they're out here. Okay. Well, one way or another, I probably am not going to stay in my location, so I will take the opportunity to... Uh, I feel like they're making more noise than I am if I can hear them. So... Oh, yeah. Absolutely. If there are giant, if there are, if there are giant frogs, they're no longer my problem. So I will pick up my stuff. I'll roll up my tarp, tie it off, and then 
I guess I'll look for I'll look for torchlight. I'll look for whatever they're using to navigate or other or, or if they're, unless they're just climbing like unless they're just skulking through the dark, crashing into things. No, you do see a, 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 a some type of electric torch over there. It's on the other side of the river where you first found this place. So sure, are they still moving? It, they're moving around a little bit. They haven't stopped. All right, I'll flash my light at them. Jack, you see a light flash across from the from across the river. Ah, that must be uh, Simone. Oh, well, I hope so. Yeah. Across the river. <laughs> Make this really awkward if it's not. Yeah, I'll head. I'll head toward the the bank. Okay, and, and probably about five or so minutes to the, the two groups become one. It's uh, undeniable that Mister Forsythe has been harmed in the uh, proceedings. <laughs> Just kind of cock an eyebrow. I checked my watch. How long has it been? Um, it's been like three and a half or four hours. Okay. Well, uh, I guess I uh, am not surprised that uh, Jack is who uh, was able to make his way out here. I was hopeful it'd be more than the three of us. Honestly, uh, I don't know that I necessarily agree. How does Jack? How's Jack looking? Jack looks fine. Okay. Tired, probably. No, you know, it was just a hike out here. There must be an entrance to uh, this estate over this wall, or on the other side of this wall, unless you are uh, wanting to get a better view from the wall itself. Uh, I'll be honest, I think the quickest entrance would be over at the pier. They're not going to walk all the way around the fence to get inside. Oh, you mean uh, if the uh, whoever else was using the boat is... Uh, I haven't actually looked to see how far that route goes, have I? No, you were going to investigate it, but... I wanted to wait until it was dark anyway. Right. I mean, perhaps uh, I was only concerned that we might be exposed. I do not know if there are any uh, sentries or residents, caretakers, groundskeepers, but we can take a look. I'll kind of like nod at Jack and Forsyth kind of shrug. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get in there. We'll scout on the ground, see if there's any, uh, you know, lights on in the house, any signs of act- recent activity. Okay. So you're going to prowl closer to the grounds then? Um, you know, if the wall, well, the, does the wall go all the way to the pier? It does. Okay. Then I will hug the wall. So if you're going up to the wall, then I would like stealth rolls. Hard success, 35 under 78. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, so it's 84 over 83. I'm tired of spending luck to make things happen. And you know what? Um, I've been out here for a number of hours at this point, waiting very patiently. And if anything, right now, I feel like the fact that I was not prepared to deal with the potential of being exposed. So I think instead of hugging the wall, I will kind of regather my, my senses and head closer because the, it's, it's uphill from the bank, right? The wall is. Yeah, and a then little there's, bit. And you said that there was, what do you call it, shrubbery and stuff between the bank and the wall. Mm-hmm. but not trees. Right. It occurs to me that I should probably just be using the, you know, shrubbery and tall grass and kind of cattails and everything else that's growing out here as cover instead of being so close to the wall. Sure. So I would like to push my roll. Go for it. So 42 out of 83. Okay. So the three of you begin moving along the wall. So the wall moves north or it moves southwest. So which angle are you going to take? Which way is the pier? Where are we? Well, the pier is on the presuppose that the pier is on a corner, right? Where the southern tip of that wall meets and then it, it splits southwest or goes back north. That's where the wall goes. So in order for us to get a better look, we're going to have to cross? Correct. Okay. But with your stealth rolls, as far as you know, no one has. No one is the wiser. And if you want to uh, continue, we will have to cross here. All right. Well, I mean, we're gonna have to cross. Let's cross. Yeah. So the water is 
deep enough that it will require a swim roll to cross. Uh, hard success level at 45. Okay. Failure. So it seems anyway, Simone, your compatriots may be not so great swimming in the dark. When I get to the other um, the side, I will fetch my rope Okay. from my bag. Who's closer to me? Well, Jack is closer. Okay, I will I will pitch him a line and just start feeding it to him so that he can pass it to Forsyth. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pass one end to Forsyth. And, uh... it's, I mean, it's like 50 feet. Yeah. I think it's long enough, right? Yeah, it's it's not terribly far, but it's deep, deep enough. I'm smiling. That... I'm smiling this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the two of you get assisted across the water with this with this rope. I am thoroughly exhausted at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm... I'm so fresh right now. Like I just, I, I just need some coffee. <laughs> okay, we'll leave you there for a second. So back at the hotel, Miss Lane, how are you spending the rest of your evening then? Feeling a little perturbed. The boys didn't let me go with them, but I'm pretty sore from training this week. So I just head back to my room to probably relax and try to get some rest. Yeah, rest and relaxation is fairly easy to get to without the uh, without the boys in the hotel it quiets down quite a bit given the fact that you've all got separate rooms here you have kind of your own little space to exist in yeah I, the, the quietness in the hotel is definitely uh, far different than um, what it was like our last night at the uh, the Waldorf yeah <laughs> just just slightly different um, an ambiance as we will call it I reach over to to my bag and grab out that note from Gavigan. It's a good reminder to always be careful. It does seem to serve as such. It also, as you kind of muse over it a little bit, it reminds you that it's quite possible that he knows far more than you might think he knows. And that makes him pretty dangerous. Yeah, I, I, I will not underestimate him again. So, Doctor, tell me how you're spending the balance of your evening, sir. Um, the Doctor is actually spending a good majority of his evening. Actually, he's going to remain sober uh, because he's actually going to entrench himself in reading the books on Egypt and Egyptology. He knows that that's coming up and he can't learn a new language or a new history without being clear-headed. So mm, interesting. he's going to take a few hours to straighten himself out a little bit and then actually start delving into the mysteries of ancient Egypt, specifically kind of their religion and uh, religious practices, if he can find it. Sure. Yeah, I mean, if you've got um, a little bit of uh, working uh, papers to work through, books and whatnot, uh, you can, I mean, Egypt is rife with religious practices and deities and there have been a few books at this point in the, the timeline that uh, that go to it so you can dig in for sure he's been floating out in the ether so to speak for a while now so he needs to ground himself for a little bit yeah why don't you make me a power roll actually fantastic because, because you have been so you've you treated whether it be ether or whether it be Alcohol. You have been, um, you've been treating yourself quite a bit. You've been self-medicating. Fifty-eight under sixty-five, sir. You come to a somewhat shocking revelation that night while reading over these texts, knowing in the back of your mind and somewhat now in the front of your mind that you're actively trying to not drink. You have come to the realization that you have a problem. You have been using alcohol as a crutch. And, and you certainly begin to play back these scenes in your mind of you'll have another drink or we've got to stop and have a drink. And all of a sudden, like, you begin just anecdotally thinking about all of these instances. And it, it begins to fulminate into this idea that maybe you need to be a little bit more careful when it comes to alcohol. Maybe this trip, this, well, vacation from Prohibition, may be a little too reckless. He's probably noted shaking in his hands, 
um, slight yellowing of the skin and the eyes, and he knows the symptoms. So uh, he he actually he's going to um, remove the alcohol from his room casually without making a fuss or anything, but put it out in the main room. Okay. All right. So, Miss O'Shea, how are you spending the balance of your evening? I'm going to get more comfortable and get in night clothes and spend some more time with the, with the scepter, see if I can get them to work the way I think that they should. Okay. How do you think they should work? They should make me feel like I can probably do more spells or rituals. Like I should feel more powerful, I guess. But if I don't feel like anything's happening, I'm going to probably eventually pass out. So so when you go through the workings of the scepter, I guess, what would you do with them to attempt to evoke something uh, or to uh, feel closer in tune with them? Probably hold both of them and maybe concentrate or see if there's any wording on them or anything like that or otherwise I'll just uh, put them under my pillow when I go to sleep and maybe that'll work hmm. so there isn't anything written on them per se but they are made of this metal which is very difficult to you know, discern it's it's strange the, the scepters are very rigid but they're also very light which is again a bit strange you would expect these twin almost twin scepters which are roughly a a foot long or so, you would expect them to be heavier than they are. And when you grasp both of them, you feel this almost electrifying current that runs from your left arm and left hand up through your shoulder, across your chest, and then back out the right, as if there's this, I don't know, it's a welling up inside yourself. Why don't you make me a pow roll? Another pow. 27 out of 65. That's a hard success. You have a revelation. You see a a wide sandstone dais in your mind's eye. This vision fills your memory. And you see a being in front of this dais with a a mummified body on top of it. And you see your hands working over the body using the scepters to raise a prayer so that way this spirit might be able to enter the afterlife. And when you wake from this rapturous dream your skin kind of feels a bit different and it's not that something has come from the inside it's not a a goosebump it's the feeling of black silk wrapped around your body so I have the robe on you do I will put them in their correct pockets you know that if you hold these scepters aloft in front of you you know that you will be able to increase your own your own well of magical power. You know if you cross them as if to defend yourself, you will have the ability to shield your own body from mystical attacks, at least to some degree. Nice. And it fills you with an amazing amount of confidence to wear this robe. You can tell why this spice merchant would want it. It's all very handy. You spend the night uh, enjoying the scepters and robes for a bit and then probably find your way eventually to bed. Mm-hmm. Uh, back out in the uh, the moors themselves, um, did you gentlemen pick a path that you'd be traversing down? I'm going to follow Simone's lead. I think that's the best. I think once we get yeah, across... Yeah, he's, he's been out here. He knows where he's going. You said our choices were... Southwest or north? 
north. Okay. So going north, you'll end up crossing the face of the dock itself. You would get a pretty good look at it. And the dock looks, quite frankly, a bit pedestrian. Uh, it's got a rowboat attached to it. Doesn't seem like it's more than, say, maybe 15 to 20 yards long at most. The wall continues to move north, and when you move along it, you see that there's farmland there. This portion past the water is used farmland. There's The dirt here has been turned probably a, at least a season or two ago. It's also dry. That's pleasant. Indeed. The wall continues to go, too. Uh, nine feet tall, stone, somewhat imposing. So does it? Does this dock appear to get used? Um, you don't really think so. Like, is there any like, is evidence of traffic or is there a path to or from it? Or is it just kind of anchored out here? Uh, there is a path from it. So there is an archway in the wall here. Uh, you see a wrought iron gate that keeps it shut. Okay. And then, yeah, there's a pathway. I don't know how much you're, how close, closer you're getting. We haven't uh, seen the, the we, have, we haven't seen the house yet, right? You have not, no. So from the gate, that's kind of the first chance we can see onto the property. Yep. If you get up close to it, I will gesture in that direction and turn my torch off and start just kind of lurking that way. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to tell them not to follow me, but I'm definitely going to get closer to the gate. I'll turn off my sure. light as well. There were some successful stealth rolls, so we'll just hang on to those for the moment. So beyond the gate itself, even in the night, uh, you can tell that there is a bit of a rise to the uh, elevation here, the, the ground, and that there is a house up there. Uh, you can tell that because there are lights on, you see windows, but it is easily uh, several hundred yards away. It's the only, like, visible structure? Yep. Wow. You say there's lights on, are there? Is, there, is the This is a multiple floor building, right? So it is. what floor yep. are they on? Uh, the first uh, and the second. Looks like you're out of ground to cover between here and there. Yeah, Jack, it's a massive amount of, of ground. Does it all look very well tended and low cut? A lot of it's low cut, yeah. But there are, I mean, it's not to say that there aren't trees here. There are a few trees on the property. But it's a well kept yard. Yeah. Might be a good idea to get a uh, better look at the exterior of the house. I'll uh, pull out my field glass and see if I can see much of the house from here. Yeah, in the dark, it's pretty tough. But uh, yeah. you do get a little, a little bit more. You can tell that the the front of the house, there's... Uh, you don't know if it's a fountain. Maybe, maybe there's a stone fountain or something like that. It's hard to tell. All right. Um, yeah, let's get closer. So how are you going to circumvent the gate or the wall? From this side... Now, this gate doesn't look like it's attended. I guess it just it does, back, it doesn't like appear to. Gate. Okay. How does it appear to be secured? Padlock or? It looks like it's a padlock, yeah, on the inside. I will, I guess, look for a good place to get a foothold. I can try to open the lock from the other side. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll give him a boost up. Let's see. Um, yeah, if you want to make climb, you can take advantage on that. He's actively helping you. I will take the extreme success, the 10 over 55. Okay. Yeah, I mean, with a with a hand up from Jack, it's basically a single handhold, a foothold, and then you're over. Um, I stick the landing, bow for the judges, and um, I will head over to the gate. And I call a locksmith. Okay. You go back to the gate. I mean, it's not far. It's right there. You can see... Your compatriots on the other side of it. You get to work. Okay, you begin the work. Jack, make me a listen roll. Uh, yeah, it's failure. 68 or 37. Okay. You hear him tinkering around inside the lock. You're pretty well focused. You hear the wind go through the trees here. And there's just... 
something different about it. It doesn't sound like it does on the other side. There's almost a groan in these trunks and branches. I probably like, deliberately pause, stop breathing, and like, they, I guess they would see me look over my shoulder, like, very, very slowly. <laughs> Just like over at the house and like the empty area behind me. Hear something? Shh. Make me a listen roll. Simone. And now that Mr. Forsythe's attention drawn to it, he can draw, he can have as well. <sighs> All right, a listen roll. This ought to go well. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I heard something. <laughs> uh, actually, <laughs> wow. none of you heard anything, which is wonderful. Uh, it's just that uh, Lawrence maxed the meter out. Yep. So. 100 over 43. It's beautiful. <laughs> wow. So I, 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 I was thinking I definitely heard something, so I think I better pull out the shotgun now. No, you definitely didn't hear anything. Okay. Definitely. I'm probably, like, hearing croaks in my head. You are. You hear a few more croaks. And you're still tensed up, still waiting on the next bit of work from the lockpick. I'm not moving. <laughs> I'm actually frozen right now. <laughs> right, you're, you're frozen. Uh, and it's at this time that something wet and slippery rubs down the back of your neck and around like your chest and it smells like compost and then a moment later there's a snap of a twig and then something groans so just so I'm clear something touched me oh yeah imagine something about the size of a of a, a man's arm comes down on the back of your your neck almost as a as a friendly like playful I was just lap. caressed by something cold and wet you were so I would like to take the opportunity to put my picks in my mouth while I die for the gate and try to climb my ass back over that wall <laughs> well um, <laughs> There is something that is going to object to you doing. I, I any know of that. it. I know it is. I know it is. But I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I'm hoping. That's all I'm doing. That's when I have hope. Okay. I have. That's all I have going for me right now. Because I don't know what it is. All I know is it touched me. It did. And it's behind me. It did. Which means that the only place I have to go without turning around and seeing what it is is forward, which is the gate, and up, which is over this wall, because I haven't figured out how to get through walls yet. You would normally go before it on decks, but as you failed to hear it... Yeah, surprised. You're a little surprised at its arrival. Uh-huh. I mean, I wasn't expecting to get touched by something cold and wet. It's, well, <laughs> I mean, really, why wouldn't you be? I mean, um, I was. Simone was not ready. Have you even been paying okay. attention? <laughs> Jack is right. usually warmer than this. This sloppy, fleshy tendril. You could say tentacle, okay? Just say the word. <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing. I'm hearing. I'm hearing pseudopod. Yeah, I'm hearing something. You're seeing a lot of words, but I don't hear the one word. <laughs> I hear a lot of words. I'm just going to say tentacle. <laughs> tentacle. Tentacle. It con constricts around the front of your throat on your collarbone and it grabs at you and as it does you feel two or three more of them press into your back and like almost collapse around your midsection so I'm it, it does not it does not appreciate me trying to go that way is what you're saying that's no, what sir. I'm hearing no sir it does not it does not and these uh, slimy tentacles are desperate to uh, grab onto you a little bit more Okay. It's not dealing any damage at this point. So well, that's good. If you would like to actively wiggle. Uh, uh, so, Jack, you probably see Simone's expression. His picks are in his mouth, and then all of a sudden, these brown and gray tentacles wrap around his body. Oh. So, I suppose you want to know what I'm going to do. 
No, no not yet. I just want you to react okay. to that. We'll get my, to that because you're all surprised. My <laughs> eyes are pretty big. Who, who, out of the three of you, who has the highest dex? I think it's Jack because mine's only a 55. I have 60. 75. All right. Well, you know how this works. Do I? Uh, well, you're, you will now have the ability to react. Okay. So please react, Simone. What, what are my options? Am I being restrained? Like, am I? Technically, what's... you are going to be, but you don't. It doesn't start until his action on this round. Okay, then I feel these things pressing into my back, and like mm-hmm. they're trying to lock me up. Yep. Um, I. This is not a man that's grabbing me. Mm-hmm. I'm. I feel like I'm being touched by a monster, so I'm going to. Um, I guess Ray that it's not as nimble as it is disgusting <laughs> and then I'm going to try <laughs> to basically like duck out of its grip and use my kind of down momentum to, to jump as high as I can to grab onto the gate and wall that's fair. So yeah, go ahead. It sounds like jump to me. I mean, you've got the wall like, there, so I like think I'm not. I'm not necessarily trying for a high jump. I'm jumping away from this thing. So I don't know if it's like more dodge, more climb. Like I don't know which. Well, you can't actively dodge like that. Uh, sure. In so I guess jump is probably if, if it, reactionary, right? So it probably would be the first thing you would go to is you're, you're jumping. You're trying to leave and leap and get get the hell out. Yes. So I will, I will, I will do that. Go um, for it. I will leap. Leaping with a failure, thirty-four over twenty. I am not going to push this roll. I'm okay. Gonna, how many luck is it to cheat death? If I really need to. Uh, if you need to cheat death, you spend all thirty points of luck. I'm not going to do that. So we are going to fail the jump. So what does that mean? It means that you try to jump and it doesn't work. Basically, you try to jump and you don't get to where you want to go. Okay. So um, you see him jump to try to get out to try to reach this uh, portion of the wall he can climb Jack and it's just something's not right (laughs) so uh, it's now your action sir can I try to get to the top of the wall or top of the uh, gate there and grab him and help pull him over yeah I mean you could climb to the top of the gate itself that's not too hard it's wrought iron Uh, and there is a bit of clearance between the wrought iron part and the rock archway and mm-hmm. Simone might even fit through it, potentially. Oh, yeah. I'm going to see what I can do to help him. Okay. So make me a climb roll. And then if you succeed in that, you'll be in position to assist him next round. Hard success. AT under 41. I love you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lawrence, you go on a 55, yes? So you will go before um, the um, the thing, so to speak. I'm not a climber. No, we know. But I have a crowbar. So I'm going to probably open the lock side. I'm just going to jam jam the crowbar into the padlock and just yoink. Yeah, make me a strength roll. All right. Success, 31 under 60. Okay. Yeah, you uh, jam the crowbar in as hard as you can, and you use two things that you have in your command, leverage and body weight. Yep. And you basically strip the lock right off the gate. Uh, There is a ferocious groan of metal on metal. Yep. And Jack, the gate shakes a little bit when Foresight does this, but you're otherwise uh, unconcerned. You're in position. So, Simone? I would like to... I guess you said Jack's in position? He is, but it's... I was saying Simone is because... Something, oh, because it's going. Something's coming for me. Something is happening, sir. Okay. Well, having failed my jump, I feel like this is the time where I need to look over my shoulder. All right. So, the grab is successful. Um, so you will take a little damage. That's uh, what is that? A, that's one one damage. Take a point of damage from being grabbed. When the second and third appendages grab you, uh, it hurts. There's there's 
there's definite strength behind these uh, far more than you were first expecting. What happens next is what can only be described in your brain as horrifying as the top tendril, the top tentacle that has you wraps around your neck and the lower ones pull at your legs and it tries to pull you apart. I, I can't try to dodge any of this. You can. So you can attempt an opposed strength or dex roll versus its strength. Okay. Is that my action? Uh, no, that's just that's a, a roll that you get. It does not take your action. Okay. Um, I'll use my dex then if I can. Yeah, that's totally its versus my strength. Hort, with a horrid success, a 23 out of 75. Only one of them will affect you this round, rather than three. So very good. That's that, great. That's good for you. <laughs> yeah, that's ideal. So the one around your neck will do you five damage. And the way it does this is by its its tentacle, you feel teeth press into your collarbone, and you feel the all of the muscles around your ch- upper chest constrict as this thing latches on and tries to pull the bits of blood and sinew out of you. It's it's feeding off of you in some disgusting way. Well, it's definitely not being playful. No, no. Um, I will probably gag and gasp, make kind of gross gurgling noises. It's a good thing you have clothes on. I'll just put it that way. I was in flight mode. But now this thing's trying to kill me, so now I'm in fight mode. So it is your uh, it's your table, sir. Your action. It has my neck. Is it like and it's twisting at me? Has it like has it spun me? Has it spun me? Uh, it has not yet. No. It basically okay. was pulling up and pulling down at the same time. Okay. Um, do I feel like because how it's constricting, like spinning probably wouldn't be an issue? I feel like it might be rather rather forgiving in that regard. I would think so. Okay. Um, I'm going to lean into this thing, and um, I will produce both sawed-offs as I turn, mm-hmm. and I'm going to try to blast the origin of whatever these things are coming from sure. with all four barrels. Ooh, very nice. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that the spin is terribly difficult for you to do, given that you're suspended. Yeah. That kind of kind of helps in that regard. Uh, so why don't you make me a firearms roll? That's one failure. Jesus Christ. So your shotguns go off. Basically, my... So when I when I spin a bit, those, the first shot's going to go super wide. And though I lose a barrel on the other hand, my basically my right hand, I will use my I guess kind of my, you know, last iota of balance. I'm gonna try to focus on the tentacle itself. Cause I feel like I was firing I was firing blind with a fifty out of seventy. Okay. So you retrain your focus just for that split second and you use the light from the first shotgun blast to refocus. And when you do refocus and fire this gun, you you come to grips mentally for that flash of moment at what you're shooting at. And this being, this creature, is an amorphous mass of mud and muck with multiple somewhat pygmy heads that grow out of the front with distended bellies and strange teeth and an array of eyes. It's all an an impossible collection of muddied flesh. And at the base of it, there seem to be long, muddy tendrils. Some end in fingertips and some end in these nasty teeth-covered pseudopods. And the benefit of this shotgun blast that's allowed you to illuminate and thus refocus is it gives you this momentary flash of pure, unadulterated terror at the sight of such a creature. 
And so now you and all of your compatriots can roll sanity. And then you then you can roll damage, Alex. Oh. Bold of you to assume that I have sanity. Uh, 759, that's an extreme success. We got a hard success, 18 over 72. 20 over, 20 under 33, a success. Very good. You're all doing so well. Uh-huh. Miss O'Shea would be proud. Uh, you can all lose three sanity. Oh, good. And, that, and that's on a successful roll, so enjoy. Yeah, the shotgun roars in your hand, both of them. And this creature lets out an hideous burble from the pygmy heads that ride along its back, each one of them chittering and screaming in their own tones. And, uh, Jack, what's your action? Hmm. Well, I will uh, continue to try to pull uh, Simone out of the uh, lion's den, as it were. Okay. He's already suspended, so if you want to make a strength roll versus the one tendril that has him. Well, that's a failure. Actually, I'm going to uh, um, try to push that. How would you like to push it? Uh, I'm going to literally let go of the wall. I mean, brace my feet, let go, and then use both hands to pull. Fair enough. Go for it. With my entire body. Yeah. That's 45 under 60. Okay. Simone, why don't you give me a... I assume you're relenting? To be getting grabbed by Jack? Yeah, for sure. Sure. Why don't you give me a dex roll just to see if you make it through the gap? I... (laughs) I know where you're trying to put me, so let's let's give it a shot, <laughs> shall we? Um, do you and as far as the shotguns go, do you want to just do um, like we can do one and one, and then I just don't have to like reload every round? Yeah, that seems fair. Okay. Mind the gap. Fifty-two minus over seventy-five. You get yanked out away from this thing. It does leave you a bit of a parting shot, however. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, scre- I'm screaming and shooting. <laughs> and you, now you need to make a hard con roll. Because uh, as this tentacle comes away... Yeah, it wants to rip me in half. It does. A hard con roll. Yes. That, sounds, that sounds very hard. I don't like... I don't like that, that there's that qualifier there. That's, yeah, well... It's hard. Let's see how hard it is. Is it that hard? Is it 30 over 65 hard? Yes, you you avoid taking um, further damage. Eight million points of damage. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Now the three of you are in a heap for the most part. Uh, although not, Mr. Forsyth. He's, he's pr- preparing for his next move, which, which uh, he can take. But for the moment, Jack and Simone are in a heap in the mud outside the gate by the pier. Did I see how big this thing was? Uh, yes. It is very large. So it won't fit through the gate? Likely not, although you're not 100% sure. That's all right. Grab Jack and Simone and physically pull them away from the gate, (laughs) headed back the way we came. That's probably a fair idea. Are the two of you uh, relenting to be assisted onto your feet? Yes. Oh, sure. The two of you get picked up and you feel the reverberations through the, the wood on the pier that you're somewhat standing on, uh, as this thing batters against the wall and the gate in a series of inhuman cries and moans, Simone, your neck and your chest are on fire in pain. I'm probably leaning pretty heavy on Jack at this point. Yeah. See, I do not know what the... I did not know that I would have uh, made the doubts. Where, where are you three heading? I'm guiding them toward the pier. <laughs> Away? Here's a rowboat we could take. Yes, there is. <laughs> are you getting them situated in the rowboat? Yep. Okay. It continues to thrash against the gate. And you're no more than maybe 50 feet from it until you pull away from the pier. Are we getting in the rowboat? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're in the rowboat. You, the three of you are rowing away. And I think that's the perfect time to close it down. And so we hope you've enjoyed this uh, episode of Masks of Neurothotep in the English chapter. And we will see you 
next week.